Thank you all for coming. This is our last instructional innovation workshop in the spring of 2021. Um, and this sort of concludes um, our exploration of just video content in general, uh, but also continues um, our work with uh, various digital spaces and uh, their affordances, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of, of working with them, um, and invites us to think about, uh, to actively think about what of this adventure that we've been part of over the last year will stay with us less next year as we are gradually moving into physical spaces, hopefully, um, and what will be a little bit less uh, relevant in that regard. Um, so the topic for today is sharing video content uh, with our students. And uh, let me begin with, uh, with sharing with you in the chat um, the, sorry, the slide deck, which is right here. And I want to share it with you because it does have a number of useful active hyperlinks that you can use to do uh, procure various bits and pieces of content. Um, if you have questions, I think it's safe to put them in the chat or just raise your hand. There's just the four of us, so uh, I can probably tackle them as they come. Cool. Okay, so we'll be sharing, we'll be talking about sharing videos, and we'll be doing that within uh, the context of uh, sort of two systems, two platforms. Yeah, Alessandra, please mute yourself. Thank you. Uh, one being YouTube and the other one being uh, being Canvas. Um, eventually, I hope um, it will become um, apparent uh, why these two are being considered and you know what kind of advantages one may have over the other um, and vice versa. Uh, but I wanted to start by showing you this, uh, which is a link to YouTube video. Uh, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We are all familiar with uh, with such links, we know how they work. We click and we get prompted over to a video uh, that they uh, denote. So what I will do now is I'm gonna copy it since you don't have access to it necessarily and put it in chat for you. Here we go. Uh, yeah, feel free, you know, feel free to watch it um, if you would like. It is a very short video um, that I took uh, on one of the trips that uh, I made to Iceland. So I'm gonna give you a minute to take a look at it. And just, you know, indicate uh, one way or the other when you're finished watching it so we can move on. Okay, Alessandra is done. And what about the others? Abdul, Amy? Oh, Maria is here with us. Hey, Maria. Hello, hello. hello. Sorry I'm late. Oh, no problem. No problem. Uh, we already started. Let me reshare today's slide deck with you. And uh, also, here's a clip that I Here's just a short YouTube video that I shared with the other participants. Uh, feel free to take a look at it. Uh, I think we've all finished watching that particular video, yes? It's a few minute long video uh, in slow motion depicting an eruption of a Icelandic geyser. There are many of such attractions on the island. Um, I just recorded one of them. And this already brings me to the first point uh, that is worth considering when uh, thinking about sharing video content is that uh, things uh, 
tend to work best uh, when, uh, let me take, let me backtrack maybe, um, copyrights. So um, in general, anything that you have produced is good to post. Uh, whenever you are uh, using, and we are talking roughly within you know, educational context, whenever you're using material uh, for educational purposes, by and large, you are protected by the copyright. Um, so long as you're not just, you know, using the entire, like, video or, you know, audio, uh, then things become a little bit dicey. Uh, when it comes to videos, um, they're, they can be tricky sometimes in the sense that they contain soundtrack. And sometimes this soundtrack contains itself copyrighted material. So it could be you know, songs, it could be compositions, um, things like that that are subject to copyright, which will be detected um, as you upload them. So it is important to you know, uh, pay attention to these things and to deliberately choose material that is you know, as copyright kosher um, as possible. Um, you know, in general, uh, anything that you produce on your own is good, either like I've shared and you know, recorded with your cell phone or maybe with Zoom um, or even with third party programs like mm -hmm, uh, which we covered earlier this semester. Um, I don't think I've posted it yet, but it will be coming up on our YouTube channel soon. Um, in addition to that, uh, the videos um, that you or the material, the files that you will be sharing um, should be quote unquote shareable. And what I mean by that, um, in general, you should try to have them come in um, the three um, sort of standard extensions, uh, which are either MP4, MOV, or AVI. Um, the last one, it was super popular a few years ago, and now a little bit less so. Uh, in general, MP4 and MOV are uh, sort of gold standard here. Uh, you know, if your videos come in these formats, I, you're pretty much good to go. If they don't, don't fret. Um, there are ways to convert things that you may already have or the videos that you may already have um, into these formats. And uh, one way to do it is by using uh, this open source program called Handbrake. Uh, I did include the hyperlink to it in the handout or in the slide deck, so uh, you're welcome to take a look. Uh, this is what the website looks like. Um, it's yeah, it's very easy to download. Uh, this depicts Handbrake for 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 the Mac. Uh, it looks pretty much the same for a PC. So um, I'm not going to be covering this in the current workshop because uh, we've covered it before in the past, and um, I'm also happy to you know cover it individually if you have any questions uh, regarding conversion. So um, so yeah, so that pretty much you know covers it between. Um, shooting uh, the video or just creating the material in general to you know paying attention to uh, various um, copyright uh, problems or, or issues that may arise um, all the way to formatting these you know three things uh, are worth to uh, keep in mind whenever we are talking about the sharing of the videos S but uh, speaking of uh, the sharing let us take a look at YouTube, uh, which again, we should all be super familiar with uh, by now. But what perhaps we may not be as familiar with is the fact that uh, every single one of us, whether we are affiliated with Columbia or with Barnard, have already a, an account with YouTube. Like we already have a channel, um, which is free and sort of comes with, uh, with, with, uh, with Lion Mail or the equivalent Barnard email system. So what I will do is right now, I will show you where to find it. Um, if you don't know already, um, here is just, you know. Would you make your fonts a little bit bigger? Oh uh, yeah, 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 of course. Tell me when. Is it good? No, that's too big. Abdul, is it okay? Yeah? Okay. 
Perfect. So let me just um, move things around on my screen a bit. So this is this is my inbox. Uh, nothing terribly interesting here. Uh, but what is interesting is what I wanted to draw your attention to is or is this icon here, these little dots. Uh, if you click on them, and the dialog box expands, and if we scroll down, we see that one of the features available to us is YouTube. So let us click on YouTube. And just like that, he are here, here is, here is the, here's our YouTube channel. Okay, um, so yeah, this is something that I uh, realized that not a whole lot of folks know that we have access to, and it's actually um, super useful um, as it is much more, I think, versatile, much more recognizable, and a lot easier to use than uh, the Columbia's internal alternative uh, which is the which is Panopto, right? So um, that being said, there are a few subtle differences between the YouTube that is available to us through uh, the Columbia or, or Barnet affiliation and just the regular you know free enterprise version of YouTube. I will not be going into these details. I will not be covering these differences. If you're interested, you know, let me know, um, and I will happily launch into uh, into them. Uh, what I will do right now is go to go to my channel right here, and you see that there's only one video here, which is the Iceland the Geyser video, which I shared with you. Now, you may at this point have a few questions about you know, the limitations of of the of, of YouTube, right? I mean, surely you know we can't just like, upload everything and anything on it. Um, the good news is that there are no limits on the number of videos that you can upload. So, you know, go to town, um, whether it's two, three, five, 100, doesn't really matter. Uh, what does matter is the length of the video or the size. So uh, YouTube places hard limits, and this also applies to the free commercial version of YouTube, hard limits on uh, how long or how big your videos can be. Um, anything that is over 12 hours, uh, will you will not be able to upload it. And likewise, anything that's over 128 gigabytes in size will also be rejected. Uh, now, one thing to note is that these are relatively recent uh, restrictions. Uh, they haven't even been around, I don't think, for a year or maybe they have at this point, um, which I'm only mentioning because there are videos out there that are longer than 12 hours, uh, believe it or not. So, you know, you may be running into them if you dig deep enough, um, but you know, that's that's the reason why they're just uploaded prior to, uh, to those limitations. Um, speaking of length, of course, since we are operating within this educational context, uh, we should keep our videos, you know, consumable, short, approachable um, and, and so that they're useful to our students and are useful to our uh, to our purposes. So uh, with that being said, let's just upload something and you know see see how it works. okay um, Also by the way, if there are any questions at any point that you guys may have, you just let me know and um, put them in the chat. Oh there's something in the chat. okay let's take a look here. I did not know that. Okay, that's probably in the reference to us having YouTube channels. Yes, we do. Okay, great. Um, chat. My, either my screen is too small or I have too many things on it. There we go. Perfect. So where were we? Oops. Just. Okay. Excellent. Just move this around here, great, and this will go down, great. So let's um, let's upload something, and to do that, we click that little cam little plus camera icon on top, and uh, we can either go live or upload a video. Um, going live is probably um, will probably merit its own workshop, so I will skip that for now. I'm just going to focus on uploading. 
OK, and here we can either drag and drop the things that we want to upload or select the files. Uh, by the way, anything that um, we are working with, all the video files are all also linked in, uh, in, in the slide deck that I shared with you so that if you want to you know, download them, if you want to play with them, you're welcome to. Uh, they're copyright free. I made them. Happy to share them with you guys. Um, Anytime. Okay, so let me maybe select another video. We just had a geyser. Let's upload a, a video of a bridge. And you will see that this video, you know, has um, or weighs 5.5 megabytes. Um, it is, if we scroll down, only 10 seconds long or less than 10 seconds long, so it meets our criteria. And it also has the right extension here, MP4, which is one of the three that we mentioned at the very beginning. So let's open it and just like that, it uploads. Okay, perfect. And um, what we see now is um, that the window that opened is what's called the wizard um, that asks us, that helps us to properly configure um, this video. So um, the title is just pulled from the file, I'll, I'll leave it as is, or maybe I'll rename it. Let's call it for, it's called the Manhattan Bridge. And there's a brief, for a brief description, I don't know, a video of the, of, no, this does not need that. Uh, scrolling downwards, there are thumbnails um, that you can select. YouTube automatically selects uh, a couple of frames for you that you and pulls them out that you can apply as thumbnails. Uh, or if you don't like any of them, you can apply your own thumbnail. Um, just a brief explanation of thumbnail is. It is essentially a picture um, that you want to um, display when a video is listed in YouTube. So when you're looking for something, let's say, you know, and um, on YouTube and then you get a bunch of hits and each of these is a little, little picture, a thumbnail is that picture, it denotes uh, the video. Um, then the system asks us for a playlist if this is something that we're interested in uh, putting our video under. We'll get back to it. This is, you know, this is fine. We can skip it for now. Uh, by the way, if, if at any point we're not sure about any of these elements uh, in, in within the wizard, that is completely fine. We can skip them. We can always return back. We can always return to them later. Um, this is important. Yes, a bridge is made for kids. Um, and then, even though I may be tempted to skip the next one, let's maybe expand the show more. And here we can indicate if this is a promotional video, something that YouTube is interested in, of course. Um, in our case, it will not be. As for the tags, um, let me just put in a couple in and explain to you what these are. Bridge and Manhattan and maybe Brooklyn. Let's do NYC. And these are essentially terms um, that the system, that YouTube, will label this video with so as to facilitate the search. In other words, when a user on YouTube looks for, next time looks for a bridge, Manhattan, Brooklyn, or New York City, or you know either one of these terms, um, there is a likelihood that this video will come up as a, in, in search results. Unless we tell YouTube otherwise, which I will cover in a second. Um, we can implement subtitles if we want. We can provide a recording date and or location. So I'll just put in New York. New York, I don't remember when this was recorded. Um, for the license, leaving it as a standard license is usually OK. And if we want to, we can also include a category here. 
And there's already a nifty category for us that we can use, which is education. Again, um, this is to help YouTube keep track of what this video is and whom to show it to, depending on the search terms. Okay. So um, with our video that's configured, let's just click Next. And normally at this point, which is the second point in our uh, in our timeline, we would be able to um, add various video elements like cards, uh, beginning screens, end screens, and so on. So these are not available within the um, Columbia slash Barnard YouTube license. Um, if this is something you're interested in, you can uncover um, these elements in a, under a standard commercial YouTube. So moving forward, um, next step is checks. And this is where the system is checking for copyright issues, which is something that I already mentioned in the beginning, right? So in other words, if your soundtrack, let's say, has um, music um, that is copyrighted, or I think even you know if there are copyright, if there's copyright imagery within the video itself, YouTube will detect it and will let you know that, hey, there is a problem here. What should we do about it? And, um, and that's pretty much it. Now, um, in terms of the visibility, this is kind of important. So you see that in this very first box, uh, we basically have three options, right? We can either make our video private, unlisted, or public. Now, for private videos, um, it is only you who will be able to, to view it. Right, so um, which you know what is what private stands for. So let's say that if you wanted to, you know, share a link to that video um, that you've made private, nobody will be able to to use that link. Nobody will be able to open it. Right? Again, for educational purposes, probably not ideal. Um, an unlisted video is a little bit less private in the sense that um, it can't be viewed at, through a link but it will not appear in the search results. So unless you have a link and only if you have a link, will you be able to watch it? And then a public video, I'm just gonna leave mine as unlisted. And then a public video is available to anyone. Anyone can share it, anyone can find it, anyone can view it. Okay, so those are the differences and it goes from the most restrictive to the least restrictive. Um, I'm not gonna cover instant premiere. And you can also schedule a date when you want this thing to be available on the platform. Uh, if you want it to be available right away, you just click save. And there it is. Okay, and just like that, our video um, is now made, not public, but unlisted. It was published, but, uh, but unlisted, meaning that it's only, it is only available through, uh, through the link. So, to show you, to, uh, to prove it to you, I'm gonna copy the link and paste it in the chat here. Okay. Boom, if you want to, you can open it, view it, enjoy it. Um, let me leave this as it is. We'll get back to this screen and uh, maybe take a minute to sort of summarize everything that we've covered so far, right? So um, starting from the very beginning, if it is the case that you have Columbia or Barnard email account, uh, you already have a YouTube account too. Great, no need to set anything else up. Um, I generally find it useful to separate work-related things from not work-related things. So anything that is work-related, I keep in a work-related YouTube channel. Um, not work-related stuff is in my private channel. There is also the LRC channel, uh, which I will share with you shortly, uh, which is a, um, it is an enterprise account. I'm sorry, it's not, it's, it's not an enterprise account. It's, it's a commercial account, meaning that it's just like a, you know, plain old YouTube account that we've made just for the LRC. Um, there are reasons for why we chose to not affiliate it with Columbia. And if you're curious, I'm happy to explain them to you as well. Um, there are no limits on the number of videos you can upload, which is great. Some hard limits on the size of the videos, 120 gigabytes or 12 hours in length, whichever comes first. Um, 
That being said, you should probably keep your things short in length, um, just you know, a lot more convenient to use in general. And uh, when you are you know ready to upload the content, just you know follow the upload wizard to the best of your ability. You know, if there's certain things that don't make a lot of sense, it's fine to skip them. You know, you can always get back to those videos and edit them. Right. Um, there are also there are also some playlists uh, that, or there's also playlist functionality that you can use when organizing the content, uh, which I did not get into, um, but let me maybe do it now. Just to, oops, let's go back here, just to demonstrate. So, all right, so we have this video right here. Let me just close this box. And you see that right now we have there are two videos. Um, let me put them in a, let me put them in playlists. So there are no playlists yet. I'm just going to create one and name it, let's name it uh, Bridges. Bridges and, uh, and, and, and Geysers. And I'm going to make this playlist public. And I'll go ahead and create it. It currently contains zero videos. But I'm going to edit it to include. I'm sorry, let me just go back to the library real, real quick here. My channel. Videos. Okay, there's one video right here. I will save it to a playlist. And there we have it. And so now if we go to a playlist, there's a one playlist containing this video. And now you may be wondering, okay, so like, why, why should I care? Why do I need to put things in playlists? Uh, well, the truth is that you don't. Uh, the channel will work just fine. Content will be just as accessible without uh, putting things in um, in your playlist. But if you want to uh, arrange your content and sort of categorize it to make it more um, legible to the user, playlists are a great way to, to do that. And to show you the fun stuff that you can do with them, I'm going to navigate really quickly to our channel, where um, which is you know, the fully configured channel that we have here. Uh, where there are multiple playlists, each of which corresponds thematically to a different thing, right? So we have, uh, I'm just going to go to all playlists. So we have, you know, there's a playlist that deals, that contains all the videos that we did on the fundamentals of Canvas. Here are all the events in fall 2020 and summer 2020. Uh, you know, anything that has anything to do with distance language pedagogies is in this playlist. So you, I think you kind of get a sense um, of, you know, why we may be interested in um, in, in, in playlists like that. Okay. Um, you will also notice that unlike my bare bones Columbia channel, uh, just go back to home here, this channel um, is a lot more fleshed out. There's a, little, there's a logo here. We have a bit of a background there. Uh, there is a little about section. Um, you know, and this is um, all part of customization, uh, which again could be its own separate workshop. If you're interested in that, um, if you are, you know, planning on sharing a channel with your your, your channel with your students, I'm happy to um, to help you deck it out like that. Just let me know. But going back to our slide deck, um, so this pretty much covers YouTube um, as it stands and sharing video content through uh, that platform. Now, it is also possible, and a lot of you guys already know it, to share your videos through Canvas. Um, and there's a few ways in which that could be done. Um, to maybe demonstrate it, let me move over to 
course, works here to our little LRC Canvas sandbox, uh, which contains a bunch of random things. What I will do is I will create an assignment, which, you know, doesn't really matter as much since um, it uses the same sort of rich content editor um, in, you know, across different content types. So, you know, whether we do quizzes or discussions or assignments, announcements, it's, it's all going to be uh, produced. It's all going to be created by this, by the, the new rich content editor. Now, uh, there was a workshop that we did on um, how to use and the rich content editor and its affordances. We have not uploaded it yet. It will be coming up if you need a refresher. Okay, so let's create an assignment and this would be our video assignment. And within this video assignment, I will say that uh, you summers ago, I went to Iceland. Here is what I what I saw. And this is, you know, a setup to share a video. Now, there are a few ways in which we could share videos um, on Canvas. I will maybe begin with the most intuitive one, right? Like uploading a video to Canvas. So let's say that we already have a video, um, which many of us do on our computer, you know, we just want to put it on Canvas so that it, it it's accessible to our students. So um, to do that, you would need to go to, we need to click on this icon, which says, you know, record, 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 I'm sorry, record and upload media. And since we are not going to be recording, I will select a video here, and I'll use the same bridge video. Okay, we're not going to be using subtitles here. There's really no point in that. I will just go ahead and submit it pretty much as is. Give it a moment to think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's processing. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to make sure that everything here is fine. Okay, let's just make it a homework assignment. Display as points. Uh, all right, do whenever available. Whenever I'm gonna I'm gonna save and publish it. And let's see what it appears as to our students. So this is this would be how our students see it, right? They can you know play it and and and, and it's fine. And you know for many of us this is this is enough, right? This is okay. Uh, we would be perfectly content with this kind of uh, functionality. But let me draw your attention to just one small detail here, which is kind of important. I'm gonna leave the student view, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to files. Now. We are in uh, sandbox one, and this is the uploaded media. You see that there is the, the video that I uploaded, the bridge video, is in the uploaded files, right? What that means for us is that it's taking up the space that we have available for our teaching materials. Again, in and of itself, completely okay. But you know, why do we? Why would we want to? use up space that could be used for other things, right? With videos that are pretty heavy usually and pretty big, if we could sort of offload that particular feature um, somewhere else. And by some reason, I mean YouTube, right? So what I mean by that is what if we could just store our videos on YouTube where we can, you know, upload however many videos we want, however big those videos will, with limitations, within reason, um, and just, you know, link them over to Canvas. And what I will show instead of uploading everything and clogging up the system. So what I want to show you is exactly how to do that. And there's two ways in which that could be accomplished. Uh, moving back to our assignments. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to the video assignment here and continue editing. 
let's say I went to Iceland. Okay, well, this is incorrect. I did not see that in Iceland. I, a few summers ago, I went to NYC. That's much better. Okay, I fell in love with the city. And decided to move there. I like it even more than Iceland. Okay, and this sets us up for another video for which we will go to our channel. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the video. Okay, pause it. And I'm going to hit share and copy the link. Okay. Going back to Canvas, I'm going to paste the link here. And this is really interesting because in the past, in order to include a YouTube video from uh, in order to include a YouTube video, you would have to copy and paste it as as an iframe code. So essentially, you would have to copy and paste this whole thing into um, into Canvas. Uh, with this recent update um, that took place over the winter break, all you need to do is just copy the link or paste the link, that's it. Canvas will take care of the rendering itself. And to show you how well it works, I will go ahead and save this. But do you need to delete the, the previous one? Okay. No, you don't. Okay, okay. They can stay. Um, let's go to student view here. So you see, this is the this is the first video that we uploaded to Canvas. And this is the link to the YouTube video that we posted, um, that we just, I'm sorry, copy pasted from YouTube. Now, uh, you notice that the preview tile is a little bit different, which is okay. Uh, but as soon as we click on it, it opens up fully and we can play it. Okay. so. Unless you are not okay with just the you know thumbnail aesthetic of that video or, or how a link renders uh, on the page, um, I think this is a very convenient um, option, and also one that does not take up the space in your canvas, which again could be used for for other things, right? Um, so. Let me, on that note, leave the student view. And this, and move over to, to our slide deck here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sort of summarize, at this point, some of the things that we covered in regards to Canvas. Um, so uh, we mentioned how YouTube videos can be pasted as iframes code. Um, I don't really think that this is something you need to worry about too much. Um, I think that having Canvas automatically generating a video based on a just YouTube link um, is enough and um, should take care of your uh, materials development needs. And then there's also uh, you know, the question of uploading videos to Canvas, which while um, intuitive and for some of us you know, preferable, has the effect of limiting the space available to us within the system for other materials, which is you know, why uh, we should consider using YouTube, especially that's something that's you know, already there available for us. Um, and easy to use. And also our students are used to the interface and there's kind of an expectation that whenever there's a video, okay, I'm going to watch it on YouTube. Um, speaking of videos, I did include uh, links to some of the videos that um, I was originally intending to use in this presentation. There's the Geyser video, there's a Manhattan Bridge video, and there's a video of the Christ the Redeemer statue that I uh, shot in, in, in Rio. Um, now, uh, the last one, you will notice that it is oriented 
vertically, right? So not like this, but rather like that. Um, do take a minute if you if you want and you know upload it to to YouTube, maybe port it into Canvas to see how it renders um, and and to to just see what you um, what you notice about it because it will render in a certain way. Um, it will be visible, it will be perfectly fine, perfectly watchable. Um, you know, it's just, it will be in a different orientation. And I think that the, looking at it yourself will uh, help you, you get a better sense of how these things um, appear um, and maybe dispel some of the questions. Um, and then speaking of questions, um, I think that with 10 minutes left, um, it would now be a good time to see if you guys have any questions uh, that I can help you answer. And if you do, you know, feel free to um, raise your hand or just unmute yourself and um, ask away. Just a quick one. Um, thank you very much for all your help. Um, but I thought Panopto also um, like hosted the videos outside of Canvas and we didn't use our like data limited in Canvas, is that right? Yeah, it is. It is right. So Panopto mm -hmm. is um, the university, um, I want to say preferred alternative to uh, video hosting. I personally, um, and I realize this is being recorded, so I may need to edit this out. Um, I find it clunky and not intuitive at all. Um, I use it a few times and uh, it's it, it just doesn't make as much sense to me as YouTube does. But again, this is, you know, just my uh, personal uh, sort of, uh, you know, perception um, of it. To answer your question, it does store your video material outside of Canvas. So in that sense, you would also be linking it without taking up the space on Canvas servers. Um, but it, it's just not going, it's just going to be a little bit different um, than, than YouTube. Um, I don't know if you guys have worked with Panopto, uh, Abdul, Vaini. No. No, okay. Um, but, I, but I know about it. You told us about it in the past. Yeah. <laughs> I have done it. I have worked with my students with Panopto. And one thing that I like is that it's all within Canvas. So Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to go outside to the YouTube or mm -hmm. to anything. It's right there. But as you say, it's it's a little bit hard to use. And um, when the students were doing the, like I wanted them to videotape themselves on Zoom, um, just like um, with a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And the students were having a hard time, like just figuring out how to, put the two screens together in one video. And so we spend a lot of time trying to do it. And for some people it worked, for some people it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out why like it was that way. But mm -hmm. I agree with you. It's a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, part of the reason it's 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 fully integrated with Canvas, of course, which um, makes it more, more convenient. I mean, for sure, you know, it's, it's right there. Uh, but at the same time, chances are that this, this that your students had never encountered it before. Um, whereas I am willing to bet that many of your students um, already have YouTube channels, and you know they're thoroughly familiar with how how YouTube works, and it just be a, you know applying what they already know uh, within the context of your class. Um, so for them, um, so that was that was part of my motivation for doing this workshop about YouTube rather than, than Panopto. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll work with it over the summertime because I've got tons mm. of stuff I want to upload and all of that. You know, but this semester I had some stuff I said, you know what, I don't want to complicate anything. And then you got students on your hands. I couldn't do this and they get frustrated and they're wondering it's going to go on my grade. It won't be on my grade. So I said, you know what, keep it basic. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, another thing is that, um, so as an instructor, right, if you are working with, with your own material, you, you use your YouTube channel, which is unlimited storage space, and you just copy and paste the links 
to whatever video content you want to include um, for your students. It will stay like we've seen, right? It will stay in, in, in Canvas. It will render within Canvas uh, without your students having to go outside of that environment. So, you know, in that sense, um, it is also useful and intuitive. Mm -hmm. Simon, I have a question. So I, I have a, a YouTube channel, uh, very, very underused, <laughs> so it's, uh, because I don't use it so, so much. But I was wondering, can we can upload only um, videos create, created by us, or we can upload um, videos taken from the web or I have some platform where, where I take uh, videos for the students from pedagogical uh, tools, uh, something like this. So um, for the purpose of this workshop, I selected videos that I took myself because you know, those are least sticky. I mean, I have full right to them. Um, but as an instructor, you certainly can upload videos from anywhere, really. Um, I'm pretty sure that there are that there there are legal clauses that you know govern um, all that. In general, if what you are doing is meant for is meant to be used in educational context, again, however that is defined. Um, and if it is meant to be consumed uh, by students whom you are working with, and only those students, and then if you are not including like entire movies, let's say, yeah, um, or you know um, pieces of you know whole pieces of video clips or documentaries, um, then you are you you are fine. Okay, so uh, because I, I'm, I'm, while you were uh, explaining how I check my YouTube channel, I've seen that I put some small um, clips of videos on movies, uh, mm -hmm. uh, short segments, so they were significant. So I, I think it's uh, maybe I'm gonna start to use it again. So it's because it's I don't know why <laughs> I didn't use it some very much in this last uh, year. Look at it, it. Was, it, was, it was a new year. You, you might have <laughs> sent yourself a headache, so wait until you're really ready for it. <laughs> don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. Mm -hmm. And it worked, and then my students were like, okay, they brought their stuff, and then the access, and it was fine. We had no issues, technical issues, and all of that, because you know, students' anxiety is also is another thing. It gets you anxious, too. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, one more thing before we go, I wanted to introduce, just remind you really about uh, about Friday. We have a pretty cool event. Yep. Um, by Ross Gand. He is a consultant. He is a visual artist. Um, he's a scholar at Harvard. Um, you may remember that some time ago we had um, Nicole Mills from Harvard who was uh, who did a talk on uh, virtual Paris with, with yep. virtual reality. Ross Gant was the person who helped uh, coordinate everything visually and program everything. So um, on Friday, he will be the one in charge of the talk. He'll be talking about a platform um, that he is co-developing for Harvard University. It's called uh, Virtual Harvard. Um, and it is designed for, for conducting instruction uh, virtually, which, you know, as we have uh, mentioned at the beginning of this, this talk is likely um, you know, to stay with us. So um, it should be a good talk. It's our last it is Columbia's last talk for the semester. There's a few other talks uh, that our colleagues at Harvard are doing, uh, which everyone's invited, of course. Uh, but this is the last one that we were putting putting together. So that's that. Um, and that was the that was the last slide, and it's four o'clock. So right on time.